Hello everyone, welcome back to the course, and now we're on lecture number three. So now that we're both signed in, hopefully, I'll just go over a little bit of a rundown on the site, how to navigate your way around, and what certain buttons do, so we can jump right into programming in the next lecture, which will be lecture number four. So, on this home page here, where we won't be spending much time at all, you can actually go ahead and go to the bottom, because there's a few useful links I want to go over real quick. And that includes the legal links, such as the terms use privacy policy, which I'd recommend reading. You can also contact the site and go to the Scratch Wiki, which is actually a really great official resource. So that if something, and I'll try to explain everything as best I can, but if something didn't fully make sense, or if there's something you want to learn or get a nice refresher on, this is a great resource to do it. And they've actually been active for almost 11 years now, which is crazy. So... You can also download an offline version of Scratch here at this download link. However, this is only for newer versions of Windows and Mac OS, so if you're on Linux or an older Windows or Mac OS version, this won't work. However, for the entirety of this course, I'll be using the online version, but know that this is also a great option and alternative to not having an account, or if you even have an account and just want to do it offline, that's great too. So... Uh, and I'm using this button to go back to the home page. Again, we won't be using the home page much at all, but you can use this button to always go back to the main page. Didn't do anything that time since we're already here. But again, this create button, that's so you can actually go to an editor without an account, but nothing you do here can save. Now, explore, what explore does is that's for kind of the social aspect of the site, so you can see what's trending for what projects other people are making have shared. Ideas, so this is cool if you're running dry on what to make for a project or you're looking for ways to learn or improve your code and maybe just do some practice, there's some great, really cool projects, ideas they have here. And about, it's just more about the site in general, I'd recommend checking that out if you just want to know a little bit more about Scratch and the project and all that. Here's a search bar if you're trying to, I don't know why it says beam there, but here's, here's a search bar where you can actually go ahead and search for projects others have created now this is only for public projects that have been shared now here's your messages now you should have received one right when you created an account from the scratch team about verifying your email welcome to scratch blah 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 here's your my stuff folders so we're going to spend the majority of our time well actually in the editor inside here you'll see that in just a moment here's a little drop down we can also access my stuff from here as well it's the same button as this folder but this folder is a little bit more convenient, and this profile is where we can change our profile picture, view our profile, things like that. None of that's required, and I probably won't do it, but feel free to do that on your own terms. Now, account settings where we can change our email, password, things like that. And sign out is where we can, well, sign out. So I'm just going to go to my stuff. Again, this button will work. I'll just, I'll just click on this folder right here. And if you're in this screen, then you're in the right spot. And you should see there's already a project here called Untitled with a little cat right here. And that cat's name is Scratch, by the way. It's kind of the website's mascot. Now... As far as my stuff goes, there's five tabs on the left. We'll start there. So all projects is all of your projects. And remember how I talked about a social aspect to this site where you can share projects. Although none of that will be required, you can always share projects. And unshared projects will go under this tab, the third tab down, and the second tab down will actually have shared projects. So projects that you have made public. And studios are essentially a way for grouping projects, but the projects have to be shared in order to put them in that studio. Now, all the projects that we'll be doing in this course will be in a studio, which the link and the link will be in the course. And if you actually want to go back and look at any of these projects, look at the code, but I would not recommend doing that first. I'd recommend doing that as we go or after the course, just for your own good and to maximize your learning potential. But, you know, just think of studios as like folders and projects as files or studios as playlists and projects as videos. Basically, these projects are just being grouped and organized in studios. You can make it to where anyone can add projects or just you. Now, trash is wherever we put deleted projects. Let's say I deleted this. I could either put it back or I could empty the trash, deleting it permanently. I'm just going to put it back. So... If you want to create a studio, you go new studio, and if you want to create a project, you go new project. We're not really going to be doing studios. Well, I'm going to have a studio for all the projects for the course, but you definitely don't have to do that, especially if you don't want to share them publicly. And all you need to do is just create projects. So we'll just go new project up here on the top right. And as soon as we do that, we'll be loaded into the editor. And we'll start programming right at the beginning of the next lecture. So I'll see you guys there.